In this video, I'm going to present an introduction to the theory of plasticity by presenting a summary of the physical behavior that the plasticity model aims to simulate. The stress strain curve of metallic materials provides the input parameters for the plasticity model. The stress strain curve is obtained using the, the traditional tensile testing. Please visit the link to view the tension test lab as presented in the Mechanics of Materials undergraduate course. The tensile testing is conducted on specimens that traditionally have two possible shapes, round or flat uh, cross-section. The specimens have a dog bone shape with the thicker end part used for gripping. The reduced section is usually long enough. This is the reduced section is usually long enough to ensure uniform distribution of stress and strain. A gauge length is marked on the specimen, which provides an initial length L0. The change in the length is termed delta. And the relationship between delta and the applied force is plotted. The plot to plot the required relationship, the specimen is mounted in a universal testing machine equipped with a load cell. The machine pulls on the specimen and measures the force. The change in the gauge length is traditionally measured using an extensometer that is mounted on the specimen at the locations identifying the ends of the gauge length. These are the ends of the gauge length and an extensometer is mounted on the specimen. There are other modern non-contact extension measurement techniques. Please visit the Instron or MTS websites to learn about such methods. While you can con conduct the test with dimensions of your choice, the dimensions of the specimens, test setup, and speed of application of forces are standardized in the ASTM standard E8. From the output of the test, the uh, engineering stress strain curve is obtained by normalizing the force by dividing it by the initial cross-sectional area and dividing the extension by the initial gauge length. Most metallic materials exhibit similar behaviors when it comes to the stress strain curves. The initial part is termed the elastic region. In this region, upon unloading, the specimen returns back to its original shape. The plot of this portion, uh, or the slope of this portion, is equal to the Young's modulus. This region is mostly linear, except for a small region of nonlinearity that lies between the proportionality limit A and the elastic limit B. Traditional steel exhibits a yielding region, here shown by the region between the points B and C. This region is characterized by extension accompanied by almost no increase in the force. The region between C and E is termed the strain hardening region. In this region, the, the curve exhibits an increase in the stress versus uh, an increase in the strain. So the stress increases when the strain increases, but with a shallow slope. If the material is unloaded in this region, for example, here at point D, we show loading and unloading, the curve follows the initial elastic slope of the stress versus strain. So the slope of this portion is equal to the slope of the initial portion. Upon reloading, the material behaves elastically until reaching the same location on the curve point D, which is considered a new yield point for the specimen. At point D, the total strain can be divided into two components, an elastic strain that is obtained by uh, this unloading curve, which is equal to the stress divided by Young's modulus, and a permanent plastic strain termed epsilon P. The term hardening describing this region characterizes the increase in the yield point with the increase of the amount of permanent plastic strain. Beyond this region, point E onwards, the specimen starts the process of necking and failure. 
For the plasticity model, the engineering stress strain curve is converted to the true stress strain curve as described in a previous video. Depending on the alloy and type of metal, the stress strain curves can have one of multiple shapes. It could have an almost bilinear behavior, where the elastic region is characterized by one slope, while the strain hardening region is characterized by another slope. Or it could have the traditional shape of the tensile test of traditional mild steel, which is characterized by a long yielding region in which the stresses can even dip before increasing again. The third curve shows the shape of the tensile, the results of the tensile tests of modern high strength steel, which often exhibit a continually increasing curve without a distinct yield point. An important component for the plasticity model is how metals behave upon reversal of loading in the strain hardening regions. Metals in this regard are divided into two classes those exhibiting no Boschinger effect and those exhibiting Boschinger effect. The first class, no Boschinger effect, upon reversal of loading, the metal has a yield stress in compression that is equal to the yield stress in tension. The other class often exhibits a yield stress in compression that is smaller than the yield stress in tension. Two other physical observations that are used to develop the plasticity model is that plastic deformations are isochoric. The volumetric plastic strain is equal to zero, which means locally the specimen deforms plastically while keeping its original volume. Another observation is that the plastic behavior does not occur under a state of hydrostatic stress. Yielding is a function, as will be described later, of the differences in the principal stresses. Codes of practice define three values based on the stress strain curve of the material, the yield stress, the ultimate stress, and the elongation. The ultimate stress is the maximum uh, stress achieved in the test, and the elongation is the maximum strain achieved in the test, and they are easy to define. The yield stress, however, does not always have a distinct value, and therefore different codes of practice have different definitions for the yield stress. The CSA Z662 code, for example, for pipeline steel, defines the yield stress as that corresponding to a total strain of 0.5%. So at 0.5% strain, draw a vertical line where it intersects with the curve that is the yield stress. The CSA S16, which is the handbook of steel construction, defines the yield stress as that corresponding to the intersection between the stress strain curve and the 0.10 2% offset to the linear portion. For the purpose of the plasticity model, the described stress strain curve is idealized as shown in the two graphs here. In the first graph, the metal behaves elastically until an initial yield point. It then follows the black curve. Upon unloading at any point, in the strain hardening region, the model assumes the material to follow the dotted line for loading and unloading. For models that are used in hand or beam calculations, the curves are often idealized as elastic, perfectly plastic, which simplify this assumption simplifies the calculations. In this idealization, the behavior is assumed to be elastic up to a yield stress beyond which the stress is constant. Unloading follows the same initial elastic behavior.